Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for September 1st, 2023. It's Friday, so I'm taking your questions, and today I'm going to take one question only. But it's a very significant question that I want to address. And the question is, is Tucker Carlson right? Was he right to bring up the question in his interview with Donald Trump of the possibility that Trump could be assassinated? Now, the, the interview was, October, was on August 23rd, and in it, Carlson asked Trump if he feared that he might be assassinated. He asked directly, quote, are you worried that they're going to try to kill you, unquote. By they, he was obviously referring to those behind the scenes operatives, sometimes called the deep state, the secret government, uh, the, the people who are responsible for the series of attacks on, on Donald Trump from Russiagate, the impeachment, all the legal proceedings against him and so on. And Trump responded to Carlson, quote, they're savage animals, they're people that are sick, unquote. Now, a week later, uh, Tucker Carlson was interviewed by Adam Carolla, and he said he believes that since nothing has worked that's been tried to stop Trump and to defeat him, you have to ask, quote, what next? And then he said, quote, we're speeding toward assassination. No one will say that, he said, but I don't know how you can't reach that conclusion, unquote. Now, since that interview, there's been a lot of criticism directed against Carlson, saying that you shouldn't even bring these topics up. It's, it's dangerous to bring it up. It, it uh, creates a circumstance where there could be an assassination. Uh, and so I received questions from some of you along those lines, should he have said it? But others have asked if I believe he is right. Now, you have to start with those who might wish to see Mr. Trump dead and ask, do they have the capability to do it and do they have a motive? Now, it's clear that at the top of the list would be the so-called deep state, the elements in the permanent bureaucracy, such as the uh, intelligence committees, the CIA, sections of the military, and so on. Uh, because these are the people who were behind Russiagate, who've been behind the anti-Trump actions since he first announced his presidential campaign in 2015. This includes networks in the CIA, in the FBI, in the National Security Agency, uh, people who have uh, repeatedly been involved in efforts to silence him or to change his policies. Uh, just, just as an example, the 51 former intelligence officials who signed the letter in October 2020 uh, dismissing the Hunter Biden laptop story as, quote, classic Russian disinformation from the Russian playbook, unquote. Turns out they've been proven to be completely wrong, that the Biden laptop was legitimate, but they used this at the last minute to intervene in the 2020 election against Trump. Now, on the question of whether they have a motive, the answer to that is simple. These are people who operate on behalf of a network of corporate cartels, financial institutions, uh, the partly identified as the military industrial complex, who have a policy which has been in place for years, which has made them rich, which has made the United States the, the strongest power in the world. And if that were challenged, as it was at times by Trump, that would put them out of business. So they definitely have a motive. But the point is you have to go higher up. You know, if you actually look at John Brennan's time at the CIA, you have to ask yourself, could this guy organize a two-car funeral procession? These are not brilliant geniuses. Uh, these are killers, uh, as in the case of Brennan's meetings with Obama to plot out who they were going to kill using drones. But they're not exactly deep strategic thinkers. So you have to ask, who pulls the strings? Who was so threatened by Trump that they might act to carry out an assassination? And that's where most people miss the boat. 
The higher ups include networks in the city of London, which I'll identify in just a moment, that are tied to the financial institutions and the corporate cartels that run international finance that are behind the so-called unipolar order or rules-based order, uh, that run the think tanks that churn out the various kinds of papers that, that I'll, I'll mention in a moment, behind the universities and the networks and universities that produce the Henry Kissingers and Zbigniew Brzezinski's. So when you look and follow the money and see what's at the top of this pyramid, the inevitable conclusion is the city of London, their Wall Street uh, allies, and their collaborators in Europe uh, centered in Brussels and Frankfurt. Now, there are two relevant pieces of evidence I want to present to you about who this network is and why they uh, are committed to uh, preventing a second Trump presidency. Let's go to December 2018, when a report was released by the House of Lords Select Committee on International Relations. This is directly the network that I identify as the City of London. And they put out a report called UK Foreign Policy in a Shifting World Order. And what do they say? They said the Trump re-election must not happen, that if it did, it would end the special relationship between Britain and the United States, which is the key to protecting their interests. That for the United Kingdom main, to maintain its position in the rules-based order, it needs that special relationship with the United States that was forged especially by Winston Churchill but through British control and influence on U.S. intelligence agencies. Remember, with Russiagate, where did the so-called evidence come from of Russia being uh, blackmailed by Putin? It came from a former MI6 operative, Christopher Steele, who was vouched for by the former chief of MI6, Sir Richard Dearloff. So this is the network that was most insistent on stopping Trump once he became president and keeping him out of the White House for a second term. Now, that hasn't changed at all. Uh, the second piece of evidence is an August 30th op-ed printed in the London Financial Times, written by Bronwyn Maddox, who's the chief executive of the Royal Institute of International Affairs, which is also known as Chatham House, which is the core of British intelligence. Now, her op-ed was titled, U.S. Allies Need to Wake Up to the Trump Question. And here's what she wrote. She said, British foreign policy requires an unchanging, dependable relationship with the United States. The idea that the U.S. will always be there, the U.S. can be counted on, whether it's to uh, impose free trade policy, whether it's to uh, deter uh, nations that, that might wish to break with the rules-based order. The U.S. must be there for the U.K. to maintain its position in the world. And she said, it has always been there. But these assumptions, quote, are confounded if Donald Trump is elected again, unquote. She writes that the return of Trump, quote, would present problems for the UK and allies on a different scale. He would have an utterly different conception of America's role in the world and the nature of its democracy at home, the rule of law at home and abroad. And so would the US voters who elected him, unquote. Now she said, unfortunately, this is not discussed, but it should be. Now, the implication is that the American voters buy into America first because there's somehow an American fascist movement that doesn't understand the importance of America's role in maintaining order in the world. But what are the real implications here? Would the U.S. stop supporting the war against Russia in Ukraine? Would the U.S. not go ahead with an attempt to sabotage China's Belt and Road Initiative if Trump were re-elected? 
Would the U.S. again reject climate change agenda as it did when Trump first came in? Would it no longer back the imperial policies of the global financial institutions and corporate cartels? And if so, isn't that the kind of threat which must be addressed? That's what the head of British intelligence chief think tank is writing publicly in the Financial Times. Now, after the BRICS summit, when it became clear that the Global South has no intention of submitting any longer to the global order, the, the rules-based order, and after the failure to destroy Russia in the Ukraine war, there's a desperation setting in among these financial oligarchs, these corporate oligarchs. They're losing control. There have been a series of coups in Africa, which are now moving to kick out the remaining interests of the French corporate cartels that have been looting Africa. There are countries in Africa that are turning to Russia and China to build the infrastructure, which was never built by their colonial overseers, their colonial controllers. And so we're, we're seeing a situation where there's a palpable loss of control by this oligarchy. And they're somewhat uh, confused as to how to deal with it. They write that there's, there's no reason for these African countries to support Russia and China, that Russia and China are going to load them up with debt and are going to intervene in their internal affairs. Well, that's what the West has been doing for hundreds of years. And now what they're seeing from Russia and China is not lectures about democracy and the need for transgender policy. What they're seeing from Russia and China is credit to build bridges, to build dams, to build power plants, to build uh, connection corridors of high-speed rail. That's why there's a shift underway. And that's what's behind the talk against Trump. Not that Trump himself would necessarily go along with this. We don't know. He says a lot of things that are important against the Ukraine war, against the corporate cartels, against U.S. policy. But when he had his chance the first time, it didn't work. He didn't follow through, and he had too many people from the establishment inside his administration. Well, would it change this time? Well, this is a situation similar to what the city of London found itself in after the Cuban Missile Crisis, when John Kennedy decided it was necessary to have a rapprochement with the Soviet Union, detente, to have an end to these hostilities and instead to address the common interests of all nations. Now, remember, Kennedy was assassinated in November 1963. His brother, Robert Kennedy, was assassinated in June 1968 as he was emerging as the front runner for the Democratic Party presidential nomination then. And Kennedy had been moving aggressively behind the scenes against the policies that he opposed of the deep state, of the financial cartels. Now, this is why it's important to discuss these things. You have to bring them out into the open. Now, the Schiller Institute and, and the associations of Lyndon LaRouche have always done this, brought out into the public what are the real tensions, the real fights going on. Uh, LaRouche called it factitious advantage. He said, if you name the person who would pull the trigger as your assassin before the trigger is pulled, you may be able to prevent the assassination. And that's what LaRouche did in naming people like Henry Kissinger, in naming the various bankers, whether it's the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the J.P. Morgans, and so on. He named the names of the controllers of these networks who had the capability to run International Assassination Bureau. And the Schiller Institute held a seminar in January of 2023 titled Resurrect the True Mission of JFK and MLK Jr., Stop NATO's World War and Dismantle the International Assassination Bureau. There's a link in the description section of this video to that seminar and the editorial about it. Those of you concerned about this should read that, study it, and ask the question, 
that, or answer the question for yourself, was Tucker Carlson right in bringing this up? I think it's, it's highly useful to discuss this and to discuss it in public, out loud. Don't be worried about being accused of being a conspiracy theorist. There have been conspiracies to commit assassinations, coups, and launch civil wars to destroy nations. That is indisputable. The evidence is there. What's necessary, though, is not just to do it for sensationalist purposes, but to focus attention on what is the underlying battle between those who advocate a global dictatorship from the city of London and the intelligence services of the US, the UK, and NATO, who have used assassination before, who have used regime change before, who have launched wars before to protect their order, the battle between them and those of us committed to shut down the unipolar order and establish a new security and development architecture which serves the interests of all sovereign nation states. That's what Lyndon LaRouche was committed to, and that's why he was on the target list. That's why a number of my associates have been put on a target list by the Ukrainian Secret Service. Not because we oppose the people of Ukraine or threaten Ukraine, but because we oppose those who are willing to sacrifice hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians in their goal of dismantling and destroying Russia. Once you get this picture of the higher-ups, who they are and what their intent is, then you can go out confidently and organize with us to shut down this assassination bureau and shut down the networks behind it. That's how we can win this fight. And as I said, they're very desperate right now. They're losing the war. So join us. I have a link for our conference for September 9th in the description section. Now is not the time to sit back out of fear that you might be criticized, but to go out and demonstrate that you deserve the right as an American citizen to shape the policy of your nation. Same thing if you live in Europe, that so-called republics only succeed when their populations are mobilized around a true and honest strategic perspective. So thanks for joining me. Uh, have a good Labor Day weekend, and I hope this will stimulate some discussion around the barbecues that take place. See you on Monday. Hello, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Support our independence to produce videos like these. Become a member of the LaRouche organization at thelarouche.org slash member. By becoming a member for $25 or more, you'll get special access to the EIR Alert Daily Briefing and Weekly Magazine, which is what I read to stay on top of things.